Okay, first of all, if you hear some squeaking and banging, it's because Adriana has decided to uh, move furniture around the house. So I'm hiding in my bedroom. Second of all, somebody asked me, why do you wear the hat? And no, I'm not bald. I have fine baby hair, but I'm not bald. I wear the hat because I was in Vilcabamba one time and it was screaming hot and I had to walk about a mile in the sun with no shade anywhere. The top of my head was burning. Sun can be very fierce here. And it was burning my brain. And the first thing I came to was this little market on the street in Vilcabamba and they had a place that was selling hats. The lady who made them was sitting there and her daughter was selling the hats, or her granddaughter. And I bought it. $20. Nice hat. Good quality. Middle of the road quality. It's not the cheap ones, but it's not the Monte Cristo Fina. It's a, just nice quality. It's soft like cloth and you can roll it up. But I don't wear hats. I wore it that day as kind of a matter of survival and for twenty dollars why not and i might have another day where it's like that so i've worn it on a couple really hot days but for the most part i really don't like hats i don't wear hats but what better than to put it to use doing videos about ecuador when panama hats are actually hats from ecuador so that's the hat so let's get on with the burger wars that's what you're all here for right Okay, first, I want to talk about why there's issues with burgers. The big issue with burgers is meat. The meat in Ecuador, the beef in Ecuador, sucks. They don't have good beef. They have milk cows. They don't have beef cows. So, in order to make it edible, you have to dress it up. You have to mix it. You have to, for example, I take two packages, two pounds of beef, one pound of ground pork. I put in some various spices, I mix that up, put it on the grill, and it's a pretty good hamburger. It takes away that bad taste, and it's, it's pretty good. It needs the pork because there's absolutely no marbling or any kind of fat in the beef here. And so the pork adds that, so they can come out juicy. So that's how I make mine. But around town, the taste for hamburgers is here because so many people went to the United States and they came back and they liked hamburgers and they want them here. So you see people trying to accommodate. And there's a ton of places, one dollar for a hamburger. They're barely edible. And if you go to a place like Chill and Grill, it will be our first comparison today. They do something similar to what I do, except they use fillers, but they use fillers like cracker crumbs. I don't know what. So a lot of the hamburgers carry that off taste, um, or they're too dry, or they put fillers in and they, and they just fall apart. So it, it's, a, it's a chore to find a good hamburger. Now there's recently been an explosion of hamburger places and I've, I've gone to some of them and that's why we're doing these reviews. Another consideration is just quality in general. It, there's not many people that seem to care about finding the best bun or finding good cheese. And cheese is, cheese is kind of nasty here. And the cheese that they'll use, it's almost like a sheet of plastic. It doesn't want to melt. It's like pseudo-American cheese, but I, I don't know what it is. Not to call it cheddar, but it's, it's really not. And it'll have this weird aftertaste. So, you know, I've come to order burgers mostly without cheese. Because you could even take a halfway decent burger and ruin it with the cheese. And the last problem that you run into is seasoning. Um, there seems to be a real misunderstanding or lack of knowledge about seasoning in a lot of places. And again, it's, it's improving and there are some good places, but for the most part, this is what you run into. They're either way over salted 
or they're bland. It doesn't seem to be usually much middle ground. Now, on the first one, on the chill and grill, I lost a few video clips, so I'll just walk through it and throw a photo up so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I was requested to do ratings on these for comparison. And uh, so as I've already got five done, and we'll probably do another five or six, um, not a bad idea. So what I've done, just to give you the, my consideration, is the look, the appearance. So I'll consider that. The structure of it, you know, how is it made up? You know, is it stacked properly? What kind of, you know, do they put vegetables in there? Is it something that will hold together, will come apart? So I've got structure. I've got, obviously, taste seasoned right, too salty, beef itself, how is the beef, and I've got value. For the money, is it worth it? So it might be a halfway decent burger, but if it's charging twice what it should, then that's really going to drop the thing down to where I wouldn't want to go back there. So that's going to be my, my benchmark for these. At the end of this video, I'm going to put the scoring for the Bodie that I checked out twice, the second chance video, the T-Rex burger, I checked that one out, I'll put a scoring on that, the Prague burger, I'll score that, may not be what you think it is, Chill and Grill, which we're doing today in this video, and the Inca burger, old tried and true Inca burger, first one I had here I think. You know you could.